Welcome to Mr. Long's YouTube channel and in our previous video series we were looking at learning how to code using Delphi as our programming language and we learned the basics of input process output and all those lovely features about how we can get started by writing basic programs. Now we're going to continue with some more Delphi basics. It's still learning some new stuff um, but it's some extra stuff that you can add to your programs, extra features and it's still in the realms of learning the basics of programming. So we're going to focus on div, mod, and constants in this video. So let's start off with back when we did the introduction into learning how to code. We learned about, we did an example about with a calculator, if you remember that example. And what I told you in that video is the moment you divide two numbers, even if those two numbers are integers, the answer must be a, a what? A real number, R num. So in other words, the answer will be a decimal value. So 9 divided by 3, as I told you, is not 3. It's 3.0. Because you can't always assume that when you're dividing two numbers that it's going to be perfect like that. For example, what happens if you say 10 divided by 3? Then the answer is 3.3 .3 recurring. So that's why it's very important to take note that the when you divide by two numbers, you must store that answer into a real value. Now what happens if we don't actually care about the decimal part? We just want the integer value. I just want to take those values and store them into an integer. So store them into integer values. Now that is possible. Another scenario could be you want to know how many times does 3 go into 9 or how many times does 3 go into 10 and you're not worried about what's left over. For that we're going to use div. Now the way div works is wherever you see your slash where you said 9 divided by 3 or 10 divided by 3 instead of divide you use div instead. And take note that when you use div the answer is an integer. So we can store that into an integer. And the numbers, by the way, that you use with div on either side of div must also be an integer. It can't, you can't use div with real numbers. So the answer must be integers. So in this case, all it does is it gives me the integer answer. It says, how many times does 3 go into 9? Well, the 3 goes into 9 three times. How many times does 3 go into 10? 3 goes into 10 three times as well. We're not worried about what's left over. So the way I like to think of it is like if you take apples, for example, let's say we've got 10 apples and I've got a bowl that can store three apples at a time. So I, how many bowls do I need if I've got 10 apples? So if I take three apples away and put them in a bowl, that means I've got one bowl. And if I've got another bowl, I can take another three apples. And then if I take another bowl, I can take another three apples. And there's not enough apples left over to make a fourth bowl. So therefore, the answer is three. I can go, I can have three bowls out of the, of ap three apples for out of 10. So that means three goes into 10 three times. And I'm not really worried about what's left over. But what happens if I am worried about what's left over? What happens if I want to find out what's left over? Well, we can use, to find out what's left over, we can use mod. Now mod is, works very similar to div. It looks exactly the same. It tells me what is left over after I've taken those sets out. So for example, it also returns an integer. It also needs to use integers. You can't use real numbers with mod. But what it does is it tells me what's left over. So for example, if I say 9 mod 3, okay, so how many times can, or how many sets of 3 can I get out of 9? Well, there are 3 sets of 9. Once I do that, what will be left over? Well, if I take 3 sets of 3 out of 9, there'll be nothing left over. It'll be 0. And if I take those three sets of three out of ten, there'll only be one left over. So that is what mod does. It returns the remainder. Now, let's not get confused about what the remainder is. So if I take 17 divided by 5 and I type that in my calculator, you're going to get 3.4. And now the problem is people think that that 4 at the end, that 4 is the remainder. No, 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 that's not the remainder. That's just a decimal value. That's a 0 0.4. The remainder is not 0 0.4. The remainder is not 4. The remainder is what's left over once you take the sets of 5 out of 17. So for example, let's think about this way. We've got 17 mod 5, okay? So if we were going to do this, there are how many sets of 5 can I get out of 17? Well, there are three sets of 5 in 17. Okay, I can put 5 into 17 three times. So what's 3 times 5? That's 15. So there's three sets of 5. So 15 of them will be sets. Then what is the difference between the 17 and the 15? What's the difference? Well, if I take the three sets of 5 out of 17, I'll be left with 2. That is the remainder. So that just so you understand that, 
that four or 0.4 is not the remainder. Two, it's what's left over. What's the whole number that's left over after you take out all the fives? Now, let's talk about constants quickly before we go to an example. Now, constants are a way that we can have like a variable that's not going to change. So what's nice about constants is that you can um, create them in your program. And if something happens to the constant that you must change it, you can just change it in one place. And where, whichever other calculation refers to that constant, it will automatically use the new value. So it's like a special variable that's like a read-only variable. So when you declare constant, just like we did VAR with variables, you use C-O-N-S-T to say this is a constant, and you give it a constant name with an equal to sign, and then what its value is. Okay, and then you put a semicolon at the end. So that's basically how you create your constants. So an example would be, let's say the VAT percentage. Let's say the VAT percentage is always 0.15, um, so there you can set uh, that, that perk as 0.15. So therefore, throughout your program, you can use that perk. And then later on, maybe they change the VAT percentage to 0.14. They drop it, for example. Then you don't have to go through your entire set of code, changing all the places you use the VAT percentage. You can just change it at the place where you declared the constant. And another example could be the max amount equals 120. If we want to enter value, or you can even have text. The logo is equal to Mr. Long Edu, for example. So those are ways that you can use constants. So let's try it out quickly. We're going to first of all let's make a constant. So yeah, I've got a program, um, and I'm going to double click on the convert button. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert this number into hours and minutes. So sometimes when you go to get a rent a movie or watch a movie, it tells you how many minutes the movie is, and you want to know well, what is what is that in hours? And well, we know that there are sixty minutes in an hour. So I'm going to create a constant. So let's go. So at the top here, we're going to say constant. C O N S T. You see it goes blue, and we're going to say hour. Um, I'm going to call it our hour equals sixty. So we're going to say constant hour equals sixty. Okay, so there we go. So whenever we refer, to, whenever we refer to a sixty, we can just use our hour from now on. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got a value coming from a spin edit, SED minutes, and I want to get that input. So we're going to get the actual input. So I'm going to make a variable called our minutes. Let's use our minutes, and that is an integer. And we're going to get that input from that spin edit. So the input step is our minutes is equal to whatever's in SED, the spin edit control, SED minutes dot and the proper how do I get the value from a spin edit? It is the value property. If I scroll down you see the value property is what we need to get from. So we're going to say dot value and you can see that it is an integer. Okay, so that's good because this is an integer and that's an integer, therefore we don't need to convert anything. Okay, so now I need to work out how many hours are, are in those minutes. So I'm going to call this R total hours. Okay, so the total hours means we take that minute. So that minute is, for example, 134. To work out the hours, we divide it by 60. But I don't care about the leftover minute, leftover bits. I just want to see how many times can 60 go into 134. Well, in this case, it goes twice. So we know that there are two hours in 134 and then a couple of minutes left over. So our total hours is equal to whatever the input is, our minutes. And we would normally say divided by 60, but that's going to give me a decimal value as well. I want to div 60. And actually, I don't even need to div 60. I can div our hour because I'm using my constant but you could use div 60 if you didn't have a constant okay so that's going to tell me how many times does 60 fit into 134 I'm not worried about what's left over so that it goes to 134 twice now what I want to know what the leftover minutes are so if I take those two hours out I'm going to be left with 14 minutes so how do I get that well I want the leftover minutes so I'm going to make a variable for our leftover which is the leftover minutes Okay, so our leftover is going to equal to our minutes mod 60 or mod our hour. 
So if we divide 60 into 134, see how many you can take out, and then whatever's left over, that's what we want to store in our leftover. So technically, this should be a 2, and this should be a 14, because 134 is 2 hours and 14 minutes. So then we can just use a show message and say uh, 2, so our total hours plus, we can say hours, let's do this, it could be 1 hour. Um, and we're going to then at the new line at the bottom here, say it'll click away. Oh, yeah, plus our left over plus the word minutes. So there we go. Okay, problem is this and this are integers, so we must convert this from an integer to a string, and then this one is also converted from an integer to a string. Okay, so let's have a look and see what it does. Okay, so one hour and 34 convert to one hour, two hours and 14 minutes, which is what we thought it was. So if I do 120 or 120, that's exactly two hours, two hours and zero minutes. And there we go. And if I make like 259. It's four hours and 19 minutes. So there we go. It's converting quite nicely. Here's another quick example using div and mod. Here we've got an amount. Let's say that we've got 28 rand or dollars and you want to get the coins. If there's a five rand coin, a two rand coin and a one rand coin. So let's, it's rands for this case because we're dealing with rands for South African rands. So I want to know how many five rand coins. If I gave you 28 rand or if you need to give me 28 rand, that'll obviously be how many fives fit into 28. Well, five files fit into 28, and then we'll be left to over with three rand, and that, that means there'll be one two rand coin and one one rand coin, if that makes sense. So we should see a five, one, one in that case. So how do we work that out? So we get the input, which is get the value from the spin edit called amount dot value, and I've declared variables here. So to work out the amount, to work out how many five rand coins we need, so we're going to say r5 is equal to whatever the amount is, and div, div 5. How many times can 5 go into my amount? So that's going to be that. Now, the whatever's left over, I must then work out the 2s and the 1s from that. So I can't use that. I actually need a variable for the left over. So the left over. So the left over after I've taken all those 5s out. I can't div the amount by 28, by 2, because then I'm going to get 5, 5 rank coins and then like 14 um, two rand coins, that means I'm getting like almost double the amount of money, which is not what we want to do, especially if you are giving the money away. So for R2, no, not R2, for R left over, we still we need to work out what's left over first. We take R amount and mod gives me what's left over after I take all the fives. So if this amount was 28, how many times can five go into 28? Well, there are five sets of five, so it goes in five times. So there will be five five rand coins, and then what will be left over after we take out those five 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 rand coins, which will be twenty five and twenty eight. The difference is three. Three will be left over. So the twos is equal to whatever's left over, and how many two rand coins I can get out of that. In other words, div two. So take all the twos out of that whatever's left over, and that will give me what's left over in, in two rand coins, basically. And then whatever's left over after that, once I've taken all the two end coins, will obviously only be ones. So I can actually go R1 is equal to whatever's left over mod 2. Once I've taken those twos out, whatever's left over will obviously be one rand coins. And that's what I'll use to work out how many one rand coins there are. And then the display is we simply in the edit controls, I think it's edit controls, edit R5 dot the text property must equal to whatever R5 is. But remember, R5 is an integer. That is a string. So we want to convert it from an integer to a string. And we need to do that for all of the other values. So I've done the output for us. So remind us, take the 5. Take, how many times does 5 go into 28? 5 times. Now, 5 times 5 is 25. What's the difference between that 25 and the 28? Whatever's left over is the 3. 
So then three, how many twos can go into three? Well, there's only one two that can go into three. And then what is left over after I've taken all those twos out of three? Well, what's left over is the one. Okay, so there we go. Let's try it out. And there we go. Five, one, one. So if I give five, five rank coins, two, uh, one, two rank coin, and one, one rank coin, I'll be able to get the amount of 28 rand. Well done for reaching to the end of this video. Go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love for you to support our channel. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.